Hello, welcome back to Storybook Crafts from the Alameda Free Library. I'm very excited to present this craft this week. We're going to make little bug puppets inspired by a couple of books. This is Planting Stories, The Life of Librarian and Storyteller Pura Belpre. And in it, and throughout her work, she loved a story called Martina the Beautiful Cockroach. So, you can check either of these out from the library. We are going to make a little bug inspired by Martina. Let's put these aside and get going. So what will we need for this craft? Well, I'm using a tissue box, a couple of tissue boxes today. Some tissue boxes you'll find have different patterns on each side. Some have the same on each side. If your tissue box, here's one that has a couple, if your tissue box has a couple of patterns on them, on, on it, then uh, you just need one. If you have a tissue box that only has one pattern on it, then find another one that has a different one so that we can have two different patterns going for our bug, for the body, the head, and the wings. So what else will we need besides that tissue box? We're gonna need some scissors. We'll need a straw, that's what I'm using here for the holder of the puppet. A chopstick would work, an old paintbrush, an old pencil, anything like that would work too. But a straw works great if you're looking for an alternative use to straws. We'll need a craft fuzzy stick. Uh, any color will do. I like the bright ones. And um, for the eyes, I've just used two little paper holes. Come here, eye. Um, from a hole puncher. You could, of course, use just plain old scrap paper, or if you've got googly eyes and you want googly eyes, sure, why not? Um, or draw them on, or it doesn't need eyes at all. If you don't want any eyes, it's up to you. So let's get started. How are we gonna do this? So you wanna start by cutting up the box and making sure that each flap is pretty, pretty, uh, Whole. You want to keep this as, as a whole piece so that you can use the whole thing. We also want to try in some places to keep that fold. This one, eh, there's not really too many places where we can keep the fold. So I think what if you're using a small box, you probably want to cut it out and try to keep these sides as whole as possible when you cut through there. I'll just take the paper out first and I'll demonstrate how to cut how to cut that side out. You want to start from the top with your scissors and just cut two flaps away that way and then you can start cutting through your box so that you can get the whole side. There we go. Just like that. And carefully cut around so that you can keep those complete. And these are usable too, these flaps. If you carefully, carefully there we go. You can even do this with your scissors if you want to get something skinny underneath there. There, you can open those up before you cut, and you have two nice big flaps there. Plenty of that pattern available. Okay, so cut open your box, get those flaps in opposing patterns ready. So here I've got a few. Let's see, I'm gonna show you in stages, but I've got one pattern here and one pattern there, right? So how am I gonna get these shapes to be uniform? So if you flip them over here, we're gonna go on the brown side to make our, our shapes. So the body shape is kind of just like a flower petal or a leaf. If you'd like it to be exact, you can do just one side, fold it over. This was from a bigger tissue box, so I was able to use the already folded edge. But if you're using a flap that's not folded, then you can just make the, the fold yourself. Um, you can do just one side and then fold it over this way and cut around just one. That way you'll have the exact same shape on the other side, um, just like I've done here. So for the body, it's kind of like a leaf or a flower petal shape. For the wings, it's a heart. 
So I drew half the heart here. And for the head, it's kind of a teardrop. So this is half a teardrop. This is what they would look like whole. So we've got a whole teardrop and a whole heart down here. And let's go ahead and cut those out. I'm gonna cut away the part that I marked. So let's cut that marker part off just so that on the other side we won't see it. So just cut all the way around it. All right, there's the body. There's a little bit left here, no big deal. I can leave it there, I can just cut it away a little. There we go, there's the body of my bug. And now I'll go for the wings and the head. There's my teardrop shape head. And when I glue today, I am going to use not glue stick. I am going to use school glue because I really want this cardboard to stick. So it's going to take some patience in waiting for these things to dry. All right. And the last piece of cardboard I'm going to use is for the antennas here. So just using these scraps that I just cut out, I'm just gonna make the antennas right there. There we go, just kinda cut through, watch your fingers when you cut, cut around that, and then I'll shape them individually. That's awesome, that's a great antenna. Okay, let me do the same thing over here. Always slow and careful with your scissors. Okay, there's the antenna. That looks great. Now it's time to put the bug together. And when it's all put together, we'll glue it onto the straw. So I'm planning it out first, seeing how I like the way it looks here. I'm going to start by gluing the wings onto the body. There's my school glue, here we go. Doesn't take a lot, just a little bit of glue there. That was really just one dot and I'm rubbing it around with the tip of the glue. There we go. And my heart's gonna go upside down on the bug there. Ooh, she's looking gorgeous already. And I'm making sure to get those folds lined up because when I glue this to the straw, I want to go right down the middle. So you can fold it a little bit just to make sure that they really stick. Same with the head. The glue actually now is gonna go on the outside, on the pattern part, so that it will stick to the bottom of the body on the underside, just like that. Get those folds lined up. Make sure enough of the head is attached to the body there so that it won't fall off. Great. And let's get those antenna. Same thing, I'm gonna put a little glue on the outside here, the pattern part, and stick it on underneath. Just a little bit. Right under there, your fingers are gonna get a little gluey. Ooh, doesn't that look awesome? Look at that. It takes a little while to dry. This will take a couple of hours to dry, especially once you've attached the body to the straw. But let's get our eyes on too. Oh, the little, come back here, little eye. There we go. A little tiny bit of glue. Just pop it right on there. And I'll secure that in a second with a little press. Okay, there's the eyes. Okay, I'll pick it up very carefully. Give it a little press. I <laughs> love it. All right, last step is, oh, of course, second to last step. We wanna put these legs on last. So I'm gonna attach my puppet to my straw first 
and then I will flip it over and attach those legs on. Okay, so this is dry enough so that I can flip it over without things falling off. I'm gonna put the glue right down the middle of my bug here. It's one line. And once I attach the straw and the legs, I'm not gonna move it. I'm gonna let it sit there and dry. So give that a little bit of a press there, right in the middle, and let it sit there and dry. Then let's plan out the legs. Let's see, I think I wanna use the pink one today. So we need six, this is a bug, they have six legs. To make six, I've folded it in half. That's two portions, right? Fold it in half again. How many do we have so far? We have one, two, three, four. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. Let's do it in thirds then. Ah, that's better. There we go. I don't want it in fourths. I want it in thirds. Because... I need six pieces, and I want them all about the same size. There we go. That looks good. It's kind of like making a Z. So to get that shape, you're going to fold it in half and then make a Z. There we go. Sometimes you just have to figure things out by doing. If they're not exactly the same size, no big deal. Cut that fuzzy craft stick right on those folds you made with your sticker. Your sticker. <laughs> Scissors. There we go. All right, I've got my six legs. I'm going to glue them on first and just leave them there. Later on, I'll go in and curl them once they're all dried. This took several hours to dry. I did not touch it. I just left it there, and I did not try to curl those until they were dry. So, little glue. Stick it right on and press. Little glue. Stick it right on and press, right here. And if you're finding that you need more glue to make those stick, like if they're popping up a little bit, that's fine. Go in and add more glue later. You can even press here and there as it's drying to make sure that they will stay. Same thing over there, just give it a little press. And, oopsie, that one's trying to get away. There we go. Okay, they are secured with the glue, but I am not going to touch it. It's just gonna stay there until it's all dried. And when it is, as you can see, it's very durable once it dries. And you've got this really cute little puppet, Martina the Beautiful Cockroach. This was super fun. You can make lots and lots. Look at how much I have left of this tissue box that I used. This one too. It's still got a lot of pieces. You can make a little collection and you can put on a show. Wouldn't that be fun? Maybe you can even get inspired to find another tissue box and create a puppet show theater out of the box. How fun. All right, I hope you enjoy these little puppets. I really hope you enjoy these books. Check them out from the Alameda Free Library and tune in next time for Storybook Crafts.